and you talked about the big acquisition. Yes, sir. I assume you guys were all in favor of it. Yes, sir. What do you mean, sir? Oh, oh. What do you mean? I was in favor of it. This was. Does yeah. anybody, Jason? I assume uh, you're good with it as well. Yeah, for what they gave up. I mean, it it's is, a one. It's a one-year deal, right? Like they restructured. They it gave up it. nothing. Yeah, to give up two fives to get uh, established pass rusher. I don't know how. I don't see where the downside is. There's a little bit of injury concern history with them. Yeah. But uh, who? What NFL player isn't? Isn't there right. not NFL well, but injury concern? I actually don't. I mean, he missed all of the 21 season, basically. But in the other three year, three of the other four years of the last four years, he had, I don't think I think he's missed one game total in those other three years. Yeah. So yeah, and I, you know, production kind of slipped a little bit as the year went on. But again, having Miles on the other side, having guys to rotate in. Yeah. That's I think that's the most encouraging thing about this is the fact that I I can't recall when the Browns have had this much depth on the defensive line. It's been I mean, maybe the, the 80s or the 90s since they've had talent that you could roll in. Yeah. And, and that's what top teams do is when you can pull guys off the field and, and not get a considerable slip in play. And yeah. I, I think that's the most encouraging Yeah, now we've got to see it on the field. Of course. Because these guys haven't played yes. together. Yes, yes. Darius Smith is not young. No, he's not. However, but he's going to be motivated. However, yes, I think he's going to be highly motivated. I think playing with Miles Garrett is going to make him better. I think – Miles Garrett playing with him is going to make Miles Garrett better. Yeah. I love this move. I think it's great. I'm not ready to tell you the Browns have the best defensive line in the league. That's absurd. I'm not they ready to tell you they got the best year. defensive line in the division. Right, right, right. We like, got to see it on the field. Right. But on paper, it is, as G was saying on the phone, yes, it's way, way, way better than it was last year. Oh, 100%. I, I would still argue that they don't de- have a definitive second starter at defensive tackle, even at this point. Right, like who's their second defensive tackle? I think what's the name going to start? Doc Rivers just got fired, by the way. Okay, did he? We can get into that. Just throw it out there. Deservedly wow. so. I mean, the we guy's the biggest choker in the NBA. Wow. I think Siaki is going to start. Really? Yeah, I think he got a chance. To right, start. but it's unknown. Like, yeah, we, but yeah, they got. There's thousands of people that could be in there. So I, I think that listen, there's, it's not without question marks. However. You spent the money on Tomlinson. You spent the money on Obo. You made this trade. Yeah. You've added three guys that we know can can play at least some level of at least solid football on the defensive line, in addition to Miles Garrett. So now you you have four guys on your defensive line. Now it's three ends and a tackle, but you have four guys on the defensive line that you know at worst are going to be quality starters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They had one last year, right. maybe two with Clowney, maybe, mm-hmm. but he was a mess. Now they have four. That's a huge difference. Now, how much do the Browns go from awful to average on the D line, or do they go from awful to excellent on the D line? That we're not going to know until we see it. But we know it's going to be better. That we know for sure. Pe- people with the Browns believe that defensive linemen will love playing in Jim Schwartz system because right. of it's it's not a lot that's asked of them. It's it's very simple, but yet it's the crux to everything that they do is the is the front four. And so for that reason also, you know, I think that these guys are going to be able to get after it, and I think they're going to enjoy playing in the scheme. So I, I I, don't see – I was never a big clowny guy, like, at all. I didn't like the signing even the first time around. Yeah. I'm much higher on this. I, it, the fact that he does when, – when, when, when guys are willing to keep bouncing and teams are willing to keep letting you go, yeah, that, that does set up – it's a you. flag. Yeah. It's certainly a flag. But the production is there. The numbers are there. It's only for one year. What you gave up is minimal for what you could get out of it. And if it works and both sides enjoy it, maybe they can work out something long term. Right. But the fact that it's a low risk, you're not tied into a massive contract with this guy. Give him a year and see what he's got. Yeah. I, I, I don't see any downside to Gee, it. Gee, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. The Browns have significantly upgraded their defensive line. We know that. Mm-hmm. Or, again, on paper, but they're, I, I would think at least they're going to be average on the defensive line. At least. Minimum, yeah. right? And they sucked last year. So that, even even if they're average, that's a pretty big upgrade. Yeah. And I, I think we'd all agree they'd probably be better than that. But I'm going to at least say minimum, the floor is average now. Okay. We know the secondary on paper is good. It disappointed at times last year, but it's good. Mm-hmm. We all like the Thornhill addition. The Browns have done – the Browns have committed to those two positions mm-hmm. with draft capital, with money. They've committed nothing to linebacker, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, now, they have in the past – but a position which was, uh, you know, as bad, or you could argue as bad as the D-line was the linebackers last year. Mm-hmm. 
They've added nobody. They brought back the guys from last year who were mostly injured. Mm-hmm. They haven't added a single. Like, the only additions at that position are undrafted free agents. Right. So, you've made no significant additions there. Do we believe, I'll start with you, G, that they think our linebackers are fine with the defensive line being a lot better? They'll, because of that, they'll play better? Or is it just, well, we can't fix everything at once, so let's go all in on the D-line, and if the linebackers aren't that good, we'll, we'll hope for the best. I don't know. What do you, I, what do you, what I, do you say to that? Listen, I sound like Jason Lewis. I've been, I've been tinkering around with this Jim Schwartz video for a long time, mm-hmm. um, just trying to dig into his philosophy as a defensive coordinator. He does these series of seminars and different things, and I've been, I've been watching them, and, and I've been start, I started on this video kind of just trying to give Browns fans a little insight into what they possibly could see. Uh, with with what the defensive line we have and what his philosophy is and the way he thinks about things. Um, But I I believe that when Jim Schwartz went into the building, he said the first thing he's going to do is he's going to do some self-scouting. So what he did is he went on through on the tape and said, okay, let me let me look at our run defense. Run defense was terrible. Our two safeties in the back, um, they had a lot of blown miscommunication. Which one of these guys is, 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 is salvageable? You look at John Johnson. I think he put it on John Johnson. I By think the way, he's still a free agent. Still a free agent. Nobody assigned him. I think he looked at John Johnson and said, I'm going to identify as him the root cause for the miscommunications in the back. When it came to the to the defensive line, he, he needed to find out which was it. Is it your D-line that's getting you gashed up front and killed? Or is it your linebackers not feeling, not reading, not being able to tackle people? And I think he came to the conclusion that the defensive line um, was getting reached. They were getting cut off. They were getting double teamed. They got no penetration. So if you look at what they've done, they've completely overhauled the D line. Completely. You got new, new names everywhere. You get to the linebacker core, and we talked to, with Dequell about JOK. JOK looked all over the place, and I think that Schwartz is going to take him as his pet project. He he feels, and I've always felt in a, restri- in, a in a standard defense, JOK cannot just stand there and and just p- play traditional four three outside linebacker. He has to be a different type of position because you don't want people getting up on him on his body. So what he did is said, all right, we got guys that's gonna keep JOK clean and we gonna move him around a little bit. When you look at Anthony Walker, is he a re- listen? Is he a, a guy that's gonna you know make waves? No. Is he a guy that's gonna make a ton of plays and be Ray Lewis? No. He's a he's a solid pro. But one thing he will do, he'll get you lined up correctly and he'll play his assignment. So when you that's look, if he can stay healthy. That's if he year. can stay healthy. Yeah. The only thing and, and kind of throwing a bowl in it. The only thing that scares you is this. Each one of those guys has been injured every single year. That's right. And if you don't, if you don't, uh, uh, you know, put any resources to that position, you can have a really strong defense, and then one or two of those guys go out, and now you're looking like, wow, we we need to scramble to find somebody. That's the only thing I can think of as to why they won't bring anybody in. And it's a gamble. It's yeah. still a gamble. Yeah. I mean, that clearly now, Jason, linebacker. If you're analyzing this team position group by position group, it's the worst position group, no? And that's the one you want to be the worst. Every team's going to have a weakness, right? Like sure. in the NFL, there's going to be holes everywhere. Sure. In Schwartz's scheme, you want it to be linebacker. He, this, this scheme de-emphasizes, and listen, I don't want to go too far in that direction because all it takes is one bust, and we've seen yep. one guy's out of position, mm-hmm. and the whole thing falls apart. But in this scheme, the priority is the front. Next comes the secondary and then the linebacker. The linebacker is, quite honestly, it is the least important position group in this scheme. So I think for that reason, of course, if if the board fell right, they would have taken a linebacker a little bit. You know, they didn't take any linebackers. They yeah. would have taken a linebacker if the board right. fell a different way to them. Uh, they, But I think that they feel comfortable with who they have. They know what they have in the building. Again, right. yes, injuries are concerned. Injuries are a concern with every team at every position. So it's part of the nature of the NFL. And I don't think you can worry about what are we going to do? You, you know guys are going to get hurt, right? Like, you know they're going yes. to. And, and you know, like, DeQuell knows the linebacker play far more than I do in the NFL. I don't want to pretend like I know how to scout linebackers. I'm not saying that at all. If he says JOK is a problem, then I'm going to lean toward the veteran. Right. However, I do think with the way that they play up front, if he's going to have success, this is the scheme for him to have success. Right, this is JOK's last year if he doesn't get it. Like, I, I believe so. If he so. can't. If they can't, if Jim Schwartz can't find a way to use him, he's not usable. 
I that's think it's probably pretty he he had a, he had a pretty good rookie year. He had a terrible second year. Yeah, a lot on the line this year. For that's him. right. For and him. I think this is a good system for him now. Like I'm not yeah. so sure about last year. Yeah. With the way they're going to run the scheme now, you know, and we saw a lot of Taki Taki last yeah. year when they moved him to the middle, where he was at least serviceable. Whereas in the past, ooh, yeah. there wasn't a lot there. But when they moved him around a little bit. Okay, there's a little bit something there. So I'm not as it, it is by far the weakest position group. Yes, it's but actually not, if you think about the Browns uh, roster, thinking about every position group, offense, defense, it's the only position group that's below even below every position group on the Browns. I would say is at worst average, average. or better. I'd agree with except that. Except for linebacker, I'd probably agree. Except with that. for linebacker, and, right? and it could be average if these guys stay healthy. They could be average. Anthony that's Walker the ceiling, I think, for that group. Probably, yeah. yes. that's probably. And, and try, I think we. We all sign for the linebackers being average. Yeah, yes. we yeah. all sign for that. And again, if you if if you have to pick one spot on yeah, this sure. t- on this defense or really yeah. on this team, yeah. to say where can we get away with being a little bit below average, where yeah. where can they get away with it? It would be linebacker. Let me ask you guys one more thing, and then we'll go to Mikey. Is this about linebackers specifically? No, finish okay. your linebackers. Me, and I'll, I'll well, push. this is not. This is more D line, but but um, um, so the Browns. G talked about it, complete overhaul of the defensive line. Mm-hmm. And think about, you know, they still have some guys there that have been here. But outside of Miles Garrett, is it possible that every other defensive lineman on this roster when the season begins was not on this team last year besides Miles Garrett? Is it possible? Yes. Is Will it happen? No. Okay. What, what, what do we do? So, Tomlinson, Smith. Oboe are all definitely on this team. Yes. Right, along with Miles Garrett. I think Alex Wright and Jordan Elliott are back from last year, for sure. You don't think Winfrey's definitely back? And I he, don't think he's definitely Ika's back. And Ika's definitely no. on the team. He was a high pick this Ika's year. Ika's on the team. So we know that there's going to be four new guys on the defensive line, minimum. I think if Hurst is healthy, what, again, he missed the last two years, so who the hell knows? Maybe this guy will never play again. But his first two years in the league with a good San Francisco team, he was a good player. Yeah. And he's missed two years. If he's healthy, he's, he's going to be on this team. Yeah, oh, for sure. If he's sure. still the player he was yeah. two yes, years ago. absolutely. So, I think there's a chance there's five, possibly even six, new defensive linemen on this team, which is good. Yeah, there's – there's. I, I think Isaiah Thomas will make the – so, they just got McGuire. He's on the team. I think Isaiah Thomas may make the team. I think Wright may make the team. Um, the guys who I think is, is borderline is uh, Jordan Elliott, but I think Winfrey and Tommy Togiai are out. They're done. Oh, you think Winfrey's definitely out? Yeah, I think you're done. Well, Togi Eye's definitely out. Yeah, Togi yeah, yeah, Togi yeah, yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Mikey, what do you got? You talked about the Browns linebackers at best being average. Yeah. I think its potential on the defensive line is elite. Potential. I agree. Is elite. So, we talked about this in the pre show meeting, and I want, I want to pitch it to you. And I want to start with you, Bull, and I want to end with G, because I know you guys are on different sides here. Do you think with the additions of Zadarius Smith, Oboe, Tomlinson, Ika, the rest of the guys they've added, McGuire, the Browns have the best defensive line in the division. And if bigger than the division, could it be the AFC, the NFL? Where where does that I, rank? I, I the, don't the think I best? can say it's the best in the division until I see them play. They're, obviously, the talent has been upgraded, and the potential is there, certainly, to be the best in the division and one of the best. I think it, it the Browns could have a top five defensive line. I think that is possible. Absolutely. But I can't, I can't make them top five when none of these guys have played for the Browns except for Miles Garrett. So until I see them do it, I'm not putting them top five. I think you've got to earn it to some degree before you're given that grade, right. but that doesn't matter. The potential is clearly there for them to be that. That's how I see it. But I'm not like I- I'm not ready to go there. There's some good pass rushes in this division, and the Browns got to prove it. But w- w- it would not surprise me if the middle of the season we're saying the Browns have a top five pa- uh, defensive line in the league. And that would, that's a long way to come from last year. Absolutely. In one offseason, that's, yeah. that's a big turnaround. I don't get hung up on rankings. Yeah, I, there's no right. way to know. Like, yeah. It's all conjecture. We're not following the other teams right. as closely, what they're doing but there. if I'm going to, like, off the top of my head, if I'm thinking who's got the best defensive lines in football, will the Eagles come to mind? The Chargers come to mind. The Steelers mm-hmm. are there. The Cowboys. And the Browns. Like, at, at this point, yeah, I think you can have that conversation that those guys. Now, what order do you want to put them in? I don't know. But yeah. Cam Hayward and Jay and uh, and TJ Watt are right. pretty doggone good within well, the, the division. Ravens defensive line was also very good second half of last year. Yeah. yeah. Bengals have a pretty good defensive line. I do think it's reasonable to think the Browns could end up being better than all in this division. I totally agree. But we gotta see it. I right. gotta see it a little bit before I think, I'm ready to I go think there. the Browns and the Steelers are probably a nudge above the Bengals and the Ravens on defensive lines, but 
Maybe not. Yeah, on paper, yes. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I'm kind of with you. I, I want to see how this plays out. I want to see how this looks in Schwartz's yeah. scheme. But and, and I'm tired of paper champions. Like, right. And remember, there's something to be said. And, G, you know this better than anybody because you play defensive line. And we think about this with offensive line. But I think it's important for defensive line, too. There's the chemistry of guys playing together, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think on paper, I see the talent that the Browns have on the defensive line and the talent that the Bengals have. And I do think the Browns have more talent than the Bengals do. Uh, DJ Reader at D tackle is better than any individual player mm -hmm. the Browns have at D tackle. Yeah. But overall, as a group, I think the Browns, the Bengals are a, like a pretty good defensive line. I think the Browns on paper are better than that, are top five potential. However, the Bengals guys have chemistry, so they might be a little better in the beginning of the year because they're used to playing together. Yes. They know each other's moves. And so there's something to be said for that. So we got to see it on the field. Yeah. But certainly on paper, they got a ton of talent there. Yeah, the, and, and I think one of the reasons why their people are so high on them is because they got a real defensive coordinator. They got a guy. No doubt. They, they, no got, doubt. they got a proven veteran. And one of the things that you love as a defensive lineman is, you know, my problem with Joe Woods and a lot of other, other uh, defensive coordinators is, yes, the principal uh, of just rushing four and dropping seven is something that every defensive coordinator wants to do. And that, that sounds great. But anybody at home can call that defense. The great defensive coordinators understand that you do want seven people in coverage, but they also understand that you can't just, just have your guys, no matter how elite they are, going up there rushing four every single time. The equivalent of that in basketball is not running no offense and having your guards run pick and roll the whole game. Yes, pick and roll is hard to stop, but the whole defense is looking at them. It's hard. They, there's different things you could do to take that away. And so when you look at a guy like Miles Garrett, um, they could take that away if you're just rushing four. You could do all kinds of stuff up there. Double team him. He was the most double team defensive lineman in, in the game yeah. by far the last five years. And so my thing is this. Can they be great up front? Sure. Zadarius Smith is the, has the best tools of anybody he's ever played with. As far as pass rush tools, the ability, the, the, yeah, the no mixture of, of running pass, the, the explosiveness, he's the best. And, and I didn't change my, I changed my mind when I heard somebody. I talked to Matt, uh, Matt Collar. He uh, he covers the Minnesota Vikings, and he talked about how 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 impactful Dalvin Tomlinson was, and how they wanted to keep him. The Browns just outbid him, yeah. and and what he brings to the defensive line as yeah. far as being stout as far as being giving us a pass rush ability and, and, and he says, you know, th they're going to have to guard him and they're going to have to put two people on him, which is going to be a decision to be made because yeah. you got Miles Garrett. So they, they got the, they got it. They got what it takes, but it's paper. Yeah, and, and, and it is interesting that he and uh, Tomlinson and Darius Smith do have some chemistry together. Yes. Right? Obviously, they played together. I mean, it's going to be exciting to see yeah. the Browns. You know, we've been scarred by optimism for the Browns so many times. Yes. That's hard. You don't want to go over the top. We we were doing Friday our predictions, and I said 9-8 and eight when I saw the schedule. I don't know. I, G went with 11 wins. I don't know what you – Jason, you weren't I'd, here. I'd probably be I, – I don't do the schedule game. Yeah, I know. But probably 10-11 wins. Right. Like, there is potential. Like, the Browns do have a roster – I tell you, I don't like to start. I don't want to do schedule game uh, now. Who cares? It's that's a you know what? That's a rough. G start. said this on Friday, and he's right. When your team is good, it don't matter who you're playing. Um, it, it it doesn't matter if you belong with the big boys. Then it doesn't matter. I I didn't care last year who the Bengals played and what right. week. I didn't care because I thought they could win every game because they were and an established Super Bowl team. That's it. The yeah, Browns are not. They weren't the year before, right? Like. Let's go. Let's see what this freaking team is made of right away. Oh, you're you're going to find out right Let's away. Let's go. And the Browns potential, it, it, the Browns potential is through the roof. If Deshaun Watson, uh, we've said this a thousand times, we'll say it a thousand more. If it all comes down to Deshaun Watson, right? The rest of the roster is there. Yep. This team has no excuse. Okay. So, None. So the let talent's me there. So, so Nuggets, I gave Mary Kay, we, Mary Kay was on yesterday. Yeah. And I point blank asked her. I said, listen, is this the best this the best talent on paper the Browns have ever had and she said yeah she said this is it I mean when you look at position group by position group yeah yeah depth all this stuff it, on paper we all yeah. know that they got to go out and play and I, I'm looking at it in terms of this if you were to ask me or ask anyone on the panel if somebody said that Deshaun Watson was the Deshaun Watson this last year in in in, in Houston what would you say about the team? It's a 12 win team. There you go. Right. Well, to me, the there goal, go. there's, there's three legit Super Bowl contenders in the AFC. 
The Bengals, the Bills, the Chiefs. Do yes. we all agree on that? Yes. The Browns have the talent, and if Deshaun Watson plays like he did in Houston, to be the fourth team in that group. I agree. All right? There's nothing the like that group is is set. Those other three teams are there. The Browns are not blowing past those three. Mm-mm. The they're goal gonna to, is they're, they're going to have to go on the road and win in one of those places. That's, yeah. Well, maybe <laughs> it's not. not two of those yeah. places. Maybe not, but one of those teams is in the division, so it's going to be tricky, right? And if you don't win the division, then all your playoff games are on the road, right? Yes. Unless there's other upsets along the way. So the Browns' goal, to me, the first goal is: can we get to in the mix with the other three teams, the Chiefs, the Bills, the Bengals? Can you be as good as those teams, and then on any given day, maybe beat them? There's never going to be a situation where you're going to be clearly better than those teams. Right. Those teams are great. Correct. They've been proven over the last couple of years, the Chiefs in particular, who have won two Super Bowls. Can they get into the mix with those teams? There's not a lot of teams. I don't think there's, in my opinion, there's only – the Browns are the only team I could see getting into the mix with those teams. I don't think the Jaguars can. I don't think they're good enough. Don't I don't the think Chargers? the Jets can. I, was you don't think the the I don't think the Chargers. Chargers the Chargers have nice the quarterback. There's something quarterback. with that team that is that is missing. Yes. Maybe it's the coach. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the coach. Maybe it is. They have the quarterback they, to get they, in the contest. They, they, they certainly have the quarterback. Absolutely. And so, honestly, so does Jacksonville. I think they do too. Uh, have the I, think they're, I think they're a couple steps away yet. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to put Trevor Lawrence in the class of those other guys. I think he gets there this year. He might. I think he gets there this year. Uh, but anyway, I, I, the Browns definitely have the capabilities to be one of those Super Bowl contending teams. But now it's got to come together. Yeah. Those teams, and, and, and by the way, if Will Brinson or Mike Florio pick the Browns to win seven, eight games, who gives a shit? Why does anybody care? Yeah. Who cares? Does that affect the Browns' record this year? No. no. The, you know, I mean, I don't understand. People get so worked up about these things. I, I don't know if that's a Cleveland thing or if that's every fan base. That's I, everywhere. Is I, it? think it's it's a, everywhere. It's everywhere. I think our fans are a little more yes, sensitive. I agree with that. I think Cleveland has, uh, I don't know if it's an inferiority complex yes. that it, I, I roll my eyes at it sometimes, but like, how dare you disrespect us and you're going to get blah, disrespected blah, blah, blah. until you deserve yeah. not to be. Yeah. Yeah, you, the, the Browns have been, and, and let's be clear, yeah. the Browns for the last four, three or three years out of the last five years, the Browns were the darlings. Of the they NFL. were getting hype. They they were Absolutely. on every show. Yes. Uh, when when they had uh, Odell and, and, and Jarvis and Baker Mayfield, when Baker was rolling, twenty twenty, they were like, oh wow, the Browns are on all prime time games. Then twenty twenty one came back. They, people were picking them. They were on the cover of Sports Illustrated. That's right. And then they threw up on their shoes. Right. Everywhere. And by the way, <laughs> and by the way, people always bring up the guys <laughs> picking against them. I've seen a couple of guys, like former players, saying, hey, I think the Browns are going to be good this year. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? The former Jets offensive lineman uh, who's on ESPN. Uh, the big – Huge Dam- dude. Damian Wood. Damian Wood. Damian oh, Woody. Yeah, uh, like, he yeah. was going on. I think the Browns are the biggest sleeper team in the league. So, listen – in the end, it doesn't matter if people respect or not respect your team. Win, you gain respect. Right. That's it. Right. I think Go to the playoffs scared. and win games that matter, you get respect. And I think people are gun-shy to pick the Browns because of what G just That's said. That's right. They've, they've gotten on this bandwagon before yes. and the wheels fell off. Exactly. It. Exactly. Well, G, before we get you guys the poll results, I know on the call, so both said they could be in the top five. Jason agreed. On the call this morning, G, you said you could make at least on paper the argument that the Browns' defensive line is as good as anyone in the league. Yeah, of course. You want to stand by that? Yeah, that's uh, look. But here's my thing: if, if you look at if you look at what what Miles Garrett was doing, Miles Garrett has not had a level of coaching. Miles Garrett has had these stooges in here. I remember Greg Williams. I, I remember Greg William, Williams telling him, telling Miles Garrett, "I only want to see you do one pass rush move." What? That's like telling Michael Jordan, I don't never want to see you shoot a elbow. Bro, I'm Jordan. I shoot wherever I want to. What are you talking about? He has not had no nobody up there. And they was never scheming nobody up. And the Browns blitz the least amount I've ever seen. Like, they put their linebackers back there and be like, hey, go cover somebody. No blitzing, none of that. I think right now when you look at his Zadarius Smith, like I said before, he's the best pass rusher, best skills, opposite of Miles Garrett. When you look at Tomlinson, Tomlinson is, is, is a top level, top flight, nose tackle, defensive defensive tackle that is going to stop the run that gives you pass rush ability. And, and, and the thing we want to get to is we want to get to the waves. But look about look look how much you know more I'm interested in the younger guys than starting. See now, Alex uh, Alex Wright. 
I don't need you to. I don't need you to start. I just need you to come You're in and extra. give me something. You're an extra. Yeah. Hey, McGuire, learn from these other dudes up front. See, Aki Ika, we might only use you for one down. So what I need you to Perry do. Perry on Winfrey, get your shit together or you're gone. Yes. Perry on, <laughs> you want to do something? We, so now everybody is maximum. And the thing that put him over the top is this. Obo thought he was going to be the dude. Young OG said, this is my time to come out here and do my thing as a starting defense in. And now all of a sudden, <laughs> Zadarius Smith is there. Yeah. Now, look at the difference between having either Obo with Alex Wright, but now you get Obo with Zadarius Smith or Zadarius Smith. Yeah. But now you can mix up a lot of different I, things. I just, the reason they, I can't put them number one on paper because they only have four short things yes. at defensive line. They four need a couple things. other guys to step up and have really big right. years. For and, and teams like Philadelphia have more than four. Phil, Philly, Philly is, first of all, Philadelphia. But the Browns could get there. We just got to see it. Philadelphia, I'm sorry, I lied to myself. Philadelphia just went. There goes that knee. Gee, man, E Christmas. Philadelphia went. What, what they get? What, what, they got Nolan. I think they got Nolan Smith, right? Yeah, they, they, got, lo they lost Georgia, Audrey, but they drafted Nolan yeah. Smith. And I mean, then, and and then they drafted the, who should have been the number one overall pick they, to start with. Right. They got him at like 10, and they got the other Jordan, Another Georgia player. Like, Jordan yeah, Davis. Yeah. I'm sorry. Their defense is loaded. I'm sorry. They're even, they may be better, right? Uh, I mean, they could be. The Hargrave was phenomenal last yeah, year. Yeah, I think yeah. Jalen Carter's going to step in and play at that level immediately. Probably. But they have so many other guys already. But. It wasn't like he was the only guy they had there. No, I know, but he had 10 plus sacks last year for the defensive tackle position, too. Right, so to expect they have... a rookie to have 10 immediately. No, nobody's expecting that. They may that. take a step but back. But they had three bit, other guys but... that had double digit sacks. <laughs> Hassan Reddick yeah. is still yeah. there. By the way, shouldn't the Browns, I would expect with Jim Schwartz them to be creative enough that we would see. So Darius Smith, Oboe, and Miles Garrett. I was thinking that. So I know. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Right? Jason, I had a dream, and I'm, I'm going to pitch this out to you guys. And this was a dream. Yeah, this was a football wet dream here. And Whoa. it is so Darius Smith on the left edge, Oboe on the right edge, Tomlinson in one defensive tackle, and Miles Garrett standing up over the center with a little Euro step. And he's on the right side. So you got one Euro step on the interior right side of the line. You got so Darius Smith doing the Euro step. Rip move that G. Bush alluded to and showed in that uh, Twitter clip yesterday from Smith. And you got a double Euro step with a bull rush in between and Oboe going one on one with the right tackle from the wide nine. Yeah. That's like, football porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's football porn. I, there, I, listen, I just. Wet dreams porn. Right, right, bro, I was in a happy meeting. I was over here <laughs> and, and, and then while I was talking to it, I was like a dog in heat. My knees just kept going. I was like, oh my goodness, McNuggets, pause. <laughs> oh, there they go. Those are my knees. Look at my knees going. Hey, bro, listen, that Greyhound package, that is the Greyhound package. When you get Zadarius Smith, you get Miles Garrett, you get you get a couple of I might even put Hill in there. I like I like your pass rush ability. When you get when you get four defensive ends up there, and it's all basketball. You see Kevin Stefanski got these dudes playing basketball at practice, right? And we missed one, McNuggets. We missed it. I need JOK giving them that step back. That AKA blitz bluff. Oh, I'm up here blitzing. Step back. I'm out here shooting. They gonna have guys coming on blitzes. You might not know where they at. And Jim Schwartz is the first dude to really start talking about manipulating defensive tackles, right? He talks about the, even the timing of engaging. He wants guys to actually engage with a defensive tackle and then drop back. Because now once you engage, he has to engage you and the blocking schemes are all messed up. Now you got a guy coming right behind you, coming free. When he talks about some of the stuff that he's able to do with messing up protections, messing up schemes, because at the end of the day, you don't need to blitz all the time to get pressure. You just need to mess up their protect protection scheme. And he talked about it. Sometimes we don't need incomplete passes. We don't even need sacks. Sometimes we schedule it and run in a defense just so they think that they ought to throw the ball fast and it's three yards and you're off the field. That, <laughs> that, that's what you need. And speaking of pressure, there's a ton of pressure this season on Kevin Stefanski. Oh, yeah. Because on paper, Andrew Berry has done a magnificent job this offseason. Can't say nothing. And they brought in – they and whoever you give credit for, they have – up again, on paper, huge upgrade at D.C., mm -hmm. huge upgrade at special teams coach. Mm -hmm. So we'd expect those units to be better. I'm expecting the defense to be good mm -hmm. this year. I'm expecting special teams to be way improved this year. It's all on the offense, and it's all on Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson's young enough – that a year out and a suspension and should not ruin his entire career. Correct. He's got to play great. 
And it's partly on Stefanski to get him great with the right play calling and scheme and all that stuff. Man, this is... They have enough talent at wide receiver. They got one of the top backs in the league. David Njoku's good enough at tight end. And uh, and you got a good offensive line. There's no excuse for them not to play well. We are here, people. We are... The Cleveland Browns fan base has waited for years for this. The, you, you, we waited for years to have a coach marry an offense with a prime time bona fide quarterback with a skill set. Not the guys that's dinking and dunking, not the 5 10 tryhards, not the guy that's going to take all the check downs. We got a bona fide quarterback that can move in the pocket. Now it's time to see what it looks like. If the Browns were smart, I would love, I would love to be a fly on the wall. To, to be in these sessions with him and him and Deshaun Watson is cooking up these plays. Talk about what the new age Browns offense is going to look like because trust me, this is supposed to be a new age Browns offense. This is a new world order. This is not your, your grandfather's three tight end game. I want to see how well he acclimates this guy. And at the same time, we cannot forget about Nick Chubb. This offense cannot forget about Nick Chubb just because we throw the ball does not mean we diminish his meaning and value. Yeah. If he can marry the two and do it in a way that Deshaun is comfortable and Nick Chubb is still a part of this offense, the Cleveland Browns will be a team where f- f- for the first time you can wake up on a Sunday and not be scared because mm. you know you can compete with anybody on that schedule. They are feeling it in the building. They all feel it. They mm. know what's at stake this year. They have to win. Uh, absolutely. And they know they have to There's win. There's a ton of it, pressure to win. This has to work. Has because, to. frankly, I don't want to consider what happens oh my if it God. doesn't. Like, oh if, if this doesn't work, I mean, what do you, what do? You do? Well, yeah. What, what do you do? G said before that Mary Kay was on yesterday and said it's the most talent the Browns have had in however long. Do you yeah. agree? Uh, yeah. I do, too? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, without... Yeah, I mean, when especially have, because of the quarterback, like right. And, and uh, nationally, people are not expecting Watson to go back to being Watson. Mm-hmm. And I think here I've seen in Cleveland, some people, but for the most part, a lot of people are not. He's not mentioned among no. the top quarterbacks. Uh-uh. No, but I think everyone here expects that to happen. Yes. If that happens, yeah, no limits how good they can be. Yeah, this is the most talented team that they've had. Certainly, yes. I think since they, I think since they came back. I mean, I have to go back and look at the O two yeah. team, but yeah, I think this is the most oh, talented yeah. team. I mean, wait, I mean. They've never had a more talented quarterback than Deshaun Watson. No, I don't think so. Never. I don't think – I I don't give a rat's ass about Otto Graham. Don't bring up Otto Graham to me. (laughs) I don't care about Otto Graham. There were eight teams. I don't give a shit about Otto Graham. 